When is it the right time to quit your YouTube channel? When is it the right time to pivot your YouTube channel, start something new? Anybody who creates anything significant has been through the dip. They went in, they wanted to quit, and they made it to the other side. But strategic quitting is when you are saying no to the things that are not the highest value so you could focus on the most important things. Here's some questions that you should ask before quitting anything and how to determine if you should quit. Number one, am I panicking, tired, or anxious? If the answer is yes on one of those things, you shouldn't quit. Like, tired eyes rarely see a bright future. If you're tired, you probably need a nap. Like, you don't need to quit. Like, are you just anxious about life and things that are going on? That is not a good reason to quit. Are you just panicking? That's never a good place to make a good decision. Panic, fatigue, anxiety. And here's the key, proving the dip and reinforcing the dip. The late Steve Jobs said, I'm convinced that about a half of what separates the successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful entrepreneurs is perseverance. Yeah. What separates the successful ones is the people who make it through the dip, right? And don't quit. The fastest path to get to where you want to go in your business, in your career, with YouTube, is going straight through the hard dip of learning, of perseverance, of wanting to quit, of being discouraged, of being overwhelmed. That's just the path. So number one, am I just tired or am I just anxious or panicking? Well, don't quit. You need to like post, you need to give YouTube a year, 52 videos, 104 videos. You need to give it some time and too many people are quitting too early because they just get a little, you don't quit on mile 10 of a half marathon at 13.1 miles because you go, I'm tired. Of course you're tired. I feel like quitting. Of course you feel like quitting, but you want to reach that finish line at least with a measurable effort to get enough test and feedback and data so don't quit too soon. Number two, how are you measuring success? How are you measuring success in terms of should you quit or not? Too many people measure success, oh, I'm not to this person I'm comparing myself to to's numbers yet, so I should quit. Why are you comparing yourself to them? They're not even in the same niche as you, and they started five years before you. Like, are you measuring your success compared to somebody else? Are you measuring your success? Like, I've seen people that we do channel reviews on, and they are, they're getting nothing but growth. They're like, they grew by 200% subscribers. They grew by 100% in views. They're posting a video a week. And they're like, I just, I don't know if this is working. I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know if it's working. Your channel is growing. But here's, I think, what happens. It's not growing fast enough. Okay, you're in the dip. You just need more patience. You just need perseverance. So, so how are you measuring success? And a great illustration that Seth Godin gave in the book is are you trying to influence one person or are you trying to influence a market? Ultimately, how are you measuring success? And if you want to influence a market, here's how Seth put it. Influencing one person is hard, but influencing a market is actually a lot easier. It just takes quality and consistency over time. YouTube's like a snowball. You keep saying the same thing. You build, you get clear on your audience, you get clear on your value proposition, you get 1% better with every upload, and you just stick with it. And after 52 videos, and after two years of content, and after three years of content, I remember when I interviewed Barnacle's Nerdgasm, he does a lot of tech videos on video influencers. It, he For six years, he just grinded it. It was a long dip, just grinding. And year seven was when things popped off for him. I know you got to wrestle with, you know, is this perseverance or is this delusion? But a lot of people give up too soon and they're measuring success wrong. They want approval from one person or one type of audience and they just go, oh, it's not working. I got a negative comment. Well, what about all the likes? Make sure you have the right measurements of success so you can see those notable benchmarks along the way. And question number three, what sort of measurable progress am I making? Here's the big key. There's three options. You're either moving forward, falling behind, or standing still. I see this pretty much nine times out of 10. We'll go to the page where the vidIQ plugin shows us how much growth is happening, and I see it all the time. They're moving forward. You know, it's like, man, you're getting 3,000 views a month, and, and you're up 200% from the month before. And then the question is, they go, yeah, but, because of course, 
yeah, but I don't get as many views as Mr. Beast. You know, I don't get as many views as whoever your favorite YouTuber is. I don't get as many views. No, if you're moving forward and never despise small beginnings and never dis despise slow growth at the beginning, because all great things start small and YouTube is such a compounding effect that this is where the opportunity is. Let's take it all the way back to the power of the dip. Most people are gonna stop once they enter the challenge. Scarcity creates value. Scarce is the people who press through to the other side. So if you're making progress, seeing growth, sometimes it might be two steps forward, one step back, but I'm just talking about analytics. YouTube tells us, green arrow, you know, like growth this month. Gray, you stayed kind of the same. But even when you stay the same, that just might mean like you grew 1,000 subscribers last month and you didn't grow, you didn't outperform that, but you still grew by 1,000 subscribers. Like that's crazy. Like you're getting more views. You're getting more subscribers. You're generating more revenue. Your CPM is going up. And you could even be thinking about, I'm producing more videos. It's easier for me to produce videos. I feel I'm not as nervous on camera. I'm a little bit more confident on camera right now. My videos are flowing better. Wow, e editing is coming easier to me. That's forward progress. The alternative, of course, is falling behind. And you gotta be serious about that. You gotta be sober about that. Are you falling behind? Are you not actually growing? Of course, in a business, in a brand, in a relationship, it might be a month of falling behind. It might be two months. Friend, it might even be a year. But there definitely is a point when it's probably time to quit. You're falling behind. Things have not only not been going forward, they've been going backwards for two years. It's probably time for a change, for a pivot. And it could be maybe eventually you have a financial target. I at one point saw that my Sean Cannell channel, specifically around vlogging, was not gonna actually help us reach the financial freedom and autonomy that I had set for Sony and I. So guess what? I strategically quit uploading there. And check that out. I didn't quit on YouTube. I quit on a particular channel or a particular video format or a particular content format. And I pivoted because it wasn't producing the defined measurement of success that I wanted on the timeline that I had set. And then finally, standing still. If you're not making for forward progress, but you're just stuck in place, again, maybe you're in some type of a relationship or you've been in type of relationship, you know, your wise friends and your pastor or whoever would probably tell you, is the relationship growing? Are you guys making progress? You're like, no, we've been stuck. We've been in the same place for, for, for two years. Well, that might be evidence, you know, that there needs to be some kind of a change. So am I panicking, tired, or anxious? Number one, how are you measuring success? If you're measuring success wrong, you're probably framing whether you should quit or not wrong. But then ultimately, are you making progress? And I'm surprised because a lot of people are making progress. The big thing is that it's a patience thing. And you know what patience is required for? Is the dip. It's the slog between starting and mastery. And I encourage you, soberly, look at the numbers, look at the timeline, look at the data, make sure you're rested when you do that, get into a positive state. I highly recommend, pick up the book, Grab the Dip by Seth Godin. Of course, we'll link it in the show notes. It's something that is good to listen, not just read for whether or not you should stick with this current YouTube channel or not, this is something you should read at every single level of entrepreneurship and business because we're thinking about it and think, media, do we stop this project or this department or say no to this? Because some of these things are cul-de-sacs, some of these things are cliffs, and some of these things are just a dip that we need to persevere through as a team. And I understand, just like you might feel challenged, we feel challenged as well to have the discernment to know when to quit and when to to stick. Digest these ideas, think about these ideas, and I highly recommend checking out The Dip for more information if you want to go deeper on this topic.